In the beginning, there was the Nexus 1 from Google and HTC. The very first Nexus ran Android 2.1, 3.7-inch display, trackball. Pretty kind of revolutionary for its time, right? The very first Nexus phone. That was followed up by the Samsung Nexus S, part of the uh, original Galaxy series a little bit, though technically not called a Galaxy phone. And that, of course, brings us to the Galaxy Nexus last year's device from Samsung. Two in a row for Samsung in the Nexus line. And the first foray into the world of displays larger than four and a half inches. You can see how far we've come as we now get to the Nexus 4. Here it is from LG, the very first Nexus device from LG. And if you haven't heard, I am kind of smitten with this device. I love the design of this phone and the crystal reflective process in the back. And just look at that kind of, it, it looks texturish, right? It looks like you can feel it, but you can't. It's flat. It's this weird non-glass. There's the camera in the back, eight megapixels. You see, it's got a little lip on the flash there. And the camera app and uh, the resulting photos are actually really good. We'll take a look at those later. But I'm just smitten at the design on the back of this thing. LG has done a really nice job with the hardware. The uh, sides of this thing are all covered in the soft touch rubbery substance, which is good. There's the power button and volume button and SIM card tray uh, because it's slippery, right? All this glass. Down on the bottom, micro USB. And you have these two exposed screws, but that does not mean removable battery. That means serviceable, right? So you can get to it if you have to. Front-facing camera and all kind of standard stuff. Put it up side-by-side side against the Galaxy Nexus again, and they actually still look very similar. Google hasn't radically changed the design of uh, the Nexus just yet. And if you didn't know any better, you might think they were the same phone. They're both running Jelly Bean, uh, Android 4.2 on the Nexus 4, but they looked and act the same, right? That hasn't changed. Uh, the Nexus 4 is just a hair thicker. Uh, you can really tell more in the design than the actual numbers if you're looking at it on paper. Uh, definitely looks different and looks better with glass instead of plastic, though, so I'm a big fan of that. So on the outside at face value, things are very much the same, but it's on the inside where they get a little different. So we're running Android 4.2, again, Jelly Bean, right? It's got a Snapdragon S4 Pro processor in it, quad-core, 1.5 gigahertz. Very, very nice. But some of the new features here are what also have me pretty excited. One of the bigger ones is in the notification bar. We've already showed you this once or twice. You pull it down, it looks like a notification bar. You get notifications there, right? But the icon in the top right has changed. Let's see, we'll pull it down and let's hit the button. And what do we have? Quick settings. How about that? So they've been rumored for a long time. We've had them in custom ROMs. And now they're different. You can toggle back and forth between notifications with that button. But do this, two fingers. Pull down with two fingers, and it takes you straight to the quick settings, which is very cool. One finger notifications, two, oop, doesn't work every time, takes a little practice. Two for the quick settings, just like that. And you can still, obviously, toggle back and forth with the button. So one finger, one finger, two fingers. Very nice, Google. I like the way they did that a lot. Uh, another interesting little addition here is wireless display. So Miracast, right? You're going to need a device that actually works with it, but it's there. <laughs> We've got a new version of Gmail as well. The iconography is a little bit different down at the bottom, and you can now swipe messages to archive them or delete them, which is cool. Now, there are a couple sticking points with this phone, and the first of those is in storage. So you can only get it in 8 or 16 gigabyte versions. This is the 16, and you have about 13 usable for you. So I understand that's going to be a big deal, especially because there's no micro SD card in this phone, right? That's unfortunate. Another one is in regards to data. So HSPA is all we got. No LTE. It's a GSM-only version. That means no Sprint. That means no Verizon. That means no LTE on AT&T or T-Mobile when it finally gets it. Another one is the battery, so it's got a non-removable battery. I've been pretty impressed with the battery life, as you'll uh, read in the review, but if you need to be able to swap a battery when you're on the go, you just can't do it. Of course, the big question with the Nexus 4 is with the camera, and a couple things to talk about here. One, of course, is the big one is Photosphere, right? So it does all the normal camera modes, but the camera app is totally redesigned, and so you've got this little focus ring here, and it'll tap and zoom and all that stuff, but hold down, and you get all these little quick settings. So they've been tucked away in there instead of in a normal kind of settings button, but you can still get to that in the top right, so it's an interesting way of doing it. It's actually borrowed from the browser. Uh, you've seen that before in the little thumb controls, so you have all your settings in there. The other big one is Photosphere. Sphere, and that's that mode right here next to panorama and a video in your normal still shot. So Photosphere, this is where the camera app will walk you around basically taking a panorama of an entire location, not just uh, horizontally but vertically as well, so you can get a 360 effect. And then it'll stitch together in the camera uh, gallery app. And you see we got a couple options, I'll show you those in a second. But push the Photosphere button here, and now you can pan and zoom around the uh, 
photosphere picture in your phone, which is very cool. The only other way to view these right now is in Google Plus on a desktop, by the way. But you can pinch and zoom and all that good stuff and see there's my family walking through the little tunnel there and we can go see them. You see, stitching isn't perfect, right? It takes a little practice and if anything's moving, it definitely has kind of a hard time. But if you get a lot of just kind of still life, it, it looks really nice and they've done a really good job. Uh, one of the other cool features of the gallery app now is you have post-processing. So you have, yes, filters, right? You got filters, you got borders, you got cropping. Uh, and you can change exposure and all that stuff in there too. So kind of basic stuff, but it's been built into the stock app, which is nice to see. So that's a quick walkthrough of the Nexus 4 from LG. Again, the hardware is stupendous. It's really, really solid. LG's done a nice job. And we kind of expected that because it's basically an Optimus G, right? But compared to the Galaxy Nexus, it's not quite night and day, but it's much, much better. The software is more refined. It might have gotten faster, but it was also you know pretty fast on the Galaxy Nexus. But for me, this is my next phone, and this is the Nexus 4 by LG. See ya. Hey, everybody. It's Phil from Android Central. And if you want to help out the site and look good, go get the best damn Android t-shirt anywhere from shopandroid.com.